Um, so we were also working on the African Health OER Network. And the, well, instead of looking at the individuals and the contacts between them, we looked more at the group of people who were working on the other part of the OER network data, was looking at the content and connections between the content and what we could get out of uh, the data that was provided. So um, these are some of the original research questions that uh, we were given on the first day. So. How often are resources being accessed, from where, by whom, under what circumstances, what levels of engagement uh, were occurring, uh, what sort of comments, stuff like that. Um, so we had Google Analytics data, we had YouTube analysis, uh, sorry, analytics, we had the CPCRM data, which we didn't use very much of, and the descriptions of the data and what we could expect from the data, which we used a lot because some of what we were looking at orders on qualitative as well as quantitative. So this is just a slide about the two groups. But ours, or the, the content group, basically looked at word frequency in comments on the YouTube videos, um, information about engagement in the top 10 YouTube videos, uh, which were exported directly from Google Analytics, uh, site traffic trends, and trends of viewers of the videos, gender and age in different countries. And this is a list of all the tools we use. Um, a lot of what was done was R, uh, various R libraries, GraphViz, Files, SAS, SVSS, Excel, Python. Um, and the specific output gained from uh, most of the content work. We have visualizations of word frequency in YouTube comments um, and with the potential for future linguistic analysis of what was done in the comments, um, what people were talking about and what sort of content, plots and box plots of engagement types by country and continent, stuff like likes versus shares, uh, favorites versus shares, stuff like that, uh, charts of site traffic trends, uh, KPI charts, and then some more beginnings of both R and Python scripts that can be used by the network in the future to gain more data like the stuff that we did this weekend. Um, so these are a couple of the uh, charts of engagement by country. Um, they're color-coded by country and continent. Uh, so there's likes versus, uh, oh, well, that's uh, likes by continent, and this is shares versus favorites. Um, there's a whole PDF of things like this um, that will be available in the whole package of data. And this is total engagement as likes, favorites, shares, uh, views uh, versus views by country. Um, and so stuff like this can also be color coded by continent to look more, get in more detail at how people are engaging um, per country and whether people are engaging in different ways with the content in different countries. And we can combine this data with some of the more specific data about gender and age to find out like, what people are gaining the most from the content and how people are engaging with it and what that engagement means. And these are just the beginnings. Um, this is a visualization of the word frequency in YouTube video comments, the visualization by Wordle. So uh, we found out that I mean, a lot of people are very grateful for the YouTube videos and want to uh, show that on in the YouTube comments, but this same script is also useful for looking at other text fields and stuff like that um, that people input in other data. So this is a uh, stack histogram of the comment word frequency. Um, so the colors on the side are words or dates that people mentioned in the comments. And the small uh, indicators on the bottom are the ID of the video. Um, and then more is more, obviously. Um, and these are some charts about engagement in top 10 YouTube videos. Um, but yeah, I'm not um, so this is just the top 10 of videos from the YouTube analytics. Um, something I wanted to focus on was the quality of traffic. I mean, what we see here is video 1 through 10, that's, you know, the first video is the highest uh, number of views. Um, what we don't know is how good is the traffic. Well, what I wanted to do was I did views over viewer, which indicates that um, a, a certain viewer is 
watching a video multiple times. But once again, what does that necessarily mean? In YouTube analytics, we don't know if someone's starting a video and finishing it. So we have to look at other measures of engagement. So what I wanted to focus on here was the uh, engagement actions per viewer. And uh, the engagement actions were essentially um, favorites, if, if you did a rating, if you uh, had a like, um, subscriber, or comment, and share. So um, we see videos two and three, they're predominantly um, the most engaged, and we see that across um, each of the comments and the ratings um, and the subscribers. And I believe one of the goals is to um, increase active, uh, active viewers. So I, I like to group the first level of favorites, ratings, and likes as um, a level of engagement, and the second, um, more long-term, um, the long-term uh, uh, health of the video. So if you subscribe, you're always going to um, be engaged with further, uh, further videos. If you comment, um, it shows uh, a level, another increased level of engagement. And the videos here are just uh, what. Yeah. Videos two and three were the most engaged, so it seems like they, people, for some reason, had a, they were more attuned to techniques of real-time PCR. <laughs> and so there were a bunch of people who did all the work on the content, and not all of them are here right now, but overall, some takeaway points that the group of us came up with, um, and things that this data can be used for in the future for the African Health OER Network, are that there may be different values attached to different forms of engagement in different areas of the world. So different takeaways from content analysis, like YouTube comments or types of engagement. Maybe people are distributing the videos or the content in different ways. Maybe that means something about their engagement with the content, and that's something that could be looked at further in the future. Um, there's also a possibility of looking at trends of language and comments both by video and by geographic area. Um, like what, question, what videos are people most outwardly grateful for and why is that replacing something that they don't have access to? Um, and what videos is the content being most discussed? Uh, and what content is being most discussed? Because these scripts can be run again over time and we can see the, the analysis of what like the frequency of words, those word frequencies can be generated <coughs> again. And with access to scripts like these and the beginnings of others that were started this weekend, the African Health OER Network has access to data which can more easily be displayed and analyzed, hopefully. Um, and then, questions for further research. What does that variety of engagement with video content suggest? And can we find out more about that from the people who are engaging in other areas of the world? Um, can site traffic and time depth information be measured more accurately? Or should it be measured in different ways as well as the ones we already have? Um, is there surprising data regarding gender, age, and demographic information, which is one of the scripts that was begun but not finished? And how can the network best use increased knowledge about network connections in combination with the content engagement and views, um, as well as a lot of really interesting data stuff that people were sharing?